I am proud to welcome the Everett High School class of 2020. Everyone, please join us for the presentation of our nation's colors by Everett High School Naval Junior ROTC Color Guard, followed by the Star Spangled Banner. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free. And the home of the brave. Thank you to our outstanding color guard, made up of Mariana Osa, Alex Krebach, George Lansana, Christian de Guzman, and Ruben Bernard, under the direction of Commander Rick Guile, who recently received a Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. And thanks to Danielle Barrow for her beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. I am delighted to welcome and thank parents, families, and the supportive friends, neighbors, teachers, coaches, advisors, and staff who've contributed to the success of the students from the class of 2020. I am Lance Bala, principal of Everett High School, and I'm honored to be a part of this graduation ceremony, which is unlike one we have ever had before. We want to honor and recognize the work that each of you have done during your time at the School of Champions. Thanks to the people who have supported each student who are now preparing for the next chapter in their lives. It is with their support and your determination that you stand ready for this moment. Thank you also to the leadership in the district, Superintendent Dr. Ian Saltzman and members of the school board, President Caroline Mason, Vice President Pam Lassane, Legislative Representative Tracy Mitchell, Parliamentarian April Berg, and Andrew Nichols. This is an outstanding senior class with an impressive list of accomplishments. I would like to highlight a few of these. 287 graduates, four valedictorians, 18 seniors in the National Honor Society, 22 Seal of Biliteracy recipients. 13 received their AA at Everett Community College. We had 36 AP scholars. EHS bands hosted guest conductors from Pierce College in Seattle Pacific, as well as the president's own Marine Band from Washington, DC. Seagull Company has presented the colors at over 64 events, including Seahawks, Sounders, and Mariners, and accumulated over 1,300 hours of community service. Siegel Company also received the Unit Achievement Award from the U.S. Navy, and they were academic state champions. In the fall, 219 students turned out for a sport, with nine earning all-league honors. 
One of our female athletes advanced to the state swim meet and another participated in the state cross country championships. In the winter, 220 students turned out for a sport with six getting all league honors. In the spring, over 320 students were participating in a spring sport prior to the closure of the season. The boys wrestling team were the Wesco North champions and the girls wrestling team came in first place at the sub regionals. We had 18 students who were three sport varsity letter winners, more than double what we normally have in a year. Our civic minded students raised over $7,000 and enough food to feed over 200 families and stock local food banks. And the blood drive resulted in enough blood donated to potentially save 200 lives. This is an impressive list of accomplishments, but by no means does it contain everything that this remarkable group of seniors have done to add to the legacy of Everett High School. From academics, to athletics, to service, to special programs, the class of 2020 has distinguished itself in ways that serve to uphold the proud traditions of Everett High in spite of facing extraordinary challenges. We are all especially proud of you. I'd like to now welcome our senior class senators. Hello, we are your Everett High School senior class senators here to introduce you to the Everett High School class of 2020 graduation. My name is Jaren. My name is Jeannie. My name is Ethan Arendt. My name is Jaden White. My name is Kayla Lay. And my name is Kelsey Price. It is a tradition to sing the Everett High School fight song after school activities and sporting events and especially at gradu graduation. We invite you to stand and sing with us at home. E-V-E-R-E-T-T -E -T -T stands for Everett High. I am an Everman born, an Everman till I die. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So let us shout once more. Shout till the echoes reach the sky. All together, let us holler. Rah, rah, Everett High. With all of the momentous events that have held us in rapt attention these past few months, Many of you have forgotten that long before the class of 2020 was faced with unprecedented challenges, they endured a flood. On the night of September 9, a day that feels like years ago now, the skies opened up in a show of stormy fury that deluged our amazing school, leading to a school closure that at the time was so significant that images of our flooded school were featured on the news. This flooding led us to close school and to assess the damage. First, we faced the daunting task of cleaning up the water so it was safe for our students to return. Then our buildings needed to be assessed to determine areas of structural concern. Assessing the storm's damage was a difficult task, made even more challenging by the fact that we have seven different buildings on our campus, all of which were built at very different times. The historic A building, built during an earlier century, presented different structural issues than our most recent addition, the gymnasium. Different times, different structures, different answers of how to protect against another flood. The notion of floods holds a special place not only in our history, but in the very fabric of human psyche. They are featured in faiths from cultures of every part of the world and also play a prominent role in storytelling dating back to the earliest recorded texts. The sky darkens, the clouds gather overhead. A downburst of water falls to the earth, engulfing the once solid ground on which people could stand. After a flood, people are left with a new reality. The class of 2020 has faced anything but an ordinary year. The first storm to hit second semester came in the form of a viral deluge as COVID-19 closed schools across the state and country, and we were directed to seek shelter and wait, outweigh the downpour. Even before those floodwaters had subsided, another storm broke and continues to develop today. America at large has finally responded with an overwhelming cry for justice, and the powerful movements of activism continue to sweep across our country and our world. If this were an ordinary year, you would have experienced and enjoyed so many rites of passage that were your due. Spring sports and concerts, plays, graduation celebrations and gatherings, spirit events, performance competitions, all these events that you've watched upperclassmen enjoy. <laughs> these rites of passage gave way to a new reality created by these storms. Time to reflect on your high school career, appreciate and rel relish your relationships at Everett High, and gain the closure that comes with one chapter of life coming to an end and another beginning 
were in many ways lost. It's true that floods can be destructive. The downburst of COVID-19 brought emotional distress and uncertainty, and for some financial devastation. The killing of George Floyd struck like a lightning bolt that finally electrified widespread intolerance of systemic racism, and the pain that was revealed in this bright light is very real and very raw. The stories that many have shared about racial injustice and the pain it causes on a daily basis moved us all to tears and to action. Those letting us know their voices have not been heard have been a wake-up call for all of us, and we need to be allies in this crucial work. Floods, however, can also wash away debris and expose flaws that cannot be ignored or wished away. Like our old buildings and structures, they reveal ways in which traditional ways of thinking are no longer adequate. Floods can reinvigorate dry lands and awaken dormant potential that springs to life. When the lockdown presented you with learning challenges, you adapted, you innovated, you figured out how to do school from home. The old systems of how we worked were upturned and each graduate here needed to make extraordinary adjustments to the new normal. When current events demanded reaction, you reached out to your school and community to open a discussion and you peacefully joined a march for justice in support of our students of color who are experiencing trauma and pain in ways that we are only beginning to understand. You spoke honestly about your experiences. You made us humbly acknowledge that our old systems needed to change and that waiting for the next flood was not an option. In the end, you figured out how to graduate in a way that no one has been asked to graduate before. So undoubtedly, undoubtedly we find ourselves asking, now what? Existing systems are in flux. Predictably annual events were wiped off the calendar and established paradigms of thinking are now up for debate. Graduating seniors are accustomed to hearing that the future is theirs for the taking and that they must seize the day, pursue their passions and make their dreams come true. But that advice was always couched in the framework of making your way in an existing world. Your future and the future of your class and indeed the future of your generation is no longer understood in the previous framework. Unlike the graduates before you who had to figure out their place in the world, you will need to take your place in helping all of us figure out the world. You may be thinking, isn't this transition difficult enough? Do I have to redesign society now too? And it's unfair, but perhaps think of it this way too. Your class is marked for greatness. It has been challenged by the floods of history in the torrential storms of 2020, and yet you have already shown strength and determination, and that's exactly what you mean, need to meet the challenges we face. Renowned civil rights activist and Georgia Congressman John Lewis recently said of the challenges we face, we may not have chosen the time, but the time has chosen us. We don't decide when a storm befalls us, nor can we control when the world will cry out in need, demanding our collective attention. But when that time comes and that cry is heard, we know we are chosen to respond, whether or not we know what exactly to do or not. The time is called upon you, the class of 2020, and we must all step forward into the unknown together and come out from our homes to see the new landscape before us with the determination to create the world we want to see. You, class of 2020, are our best hope. Congratulations on your achievements getting to this moment. We are all excited to see how you transform the world. And now, Superintendent Dr. Ian Saltzman will introduce Everett High School's Superintendent Scholar Award winner. Thank you. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Everett High School's Superintendent Scholarship for Excellence winner, Ms. Lucy Lee. Lucy is an outstanding scholar, graduating with a 4.0 GPA while having taken 10 AP classes and graduating with AP capstone diploma. She is an AP scholar with distinction and was math department scholar and Spanish department scholar. She is motivated to learn and excel out of a desire to make things better for society and for her family. She is soft-spoken and calm, but has a brilliant mind and also a black belt in Taekwondo. She can be surprising in many ways. She is a great balance of right and left brains, majoring next year in mathematics, but minoring in computer animation because of our, her artistic side. She believes that prejudice is an ignorance that binds us from the truth and hinders us from cooperating to achieve better humanity. It is clear that Lucy's drive, intelligence, and kindness is going to make a better humanity for all. Please join me in congratulating 
the Everett High School Superintendent Scholarship Excellence winner, Miss Lucy Lee. Thank you, Dr. Salzman. Now we have an opportunity to listen to a virtual performance from members of the Everett High School Band under the direction of Megan Vinther performing Rainbow Connection, composed by Paul Williams and Kenneth Asher, arranged by John Moss. Special thanks to our band. And now, our first class speaker today is Jeannie Unlamam. Hello parents, teachers, my ages, friends, and fam. First, I'd like to apologize that y'all have to sit through this speech of mine. Then, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity you've given me. It is truly my honor to have the privilege to speak at our graduation, even if it's virtual. However, I also would like to hold you accountable for your own actions. Know that out of all these intellectual, charismatic people, you've chosen me, an Asian immigrant who can't even speak English or Thai correctly, who mistook 50 shades of gray for between shades of gray, who's terrified of public speaking. You expect me to impart to you wisdom. Well, you asked for it. After searching for the best graduation speech ever on YouTube, I learned the most valuable wisdom I can share is my personal experience, the principle I live by, as well as my reflection on my journey thus far. And if by chance you can't relate, please cheer along, clap, and feel free to scream at your screen, whatever it is you do, let's give it a try. Congratulations, class of 2020, the best class to ever exist. You've made it very far, not to the end, but to the beginning of the greatest adventure yet. You earn it. And remember, whatever path you choose, the flock of seagull is flying along with you. I can remember eight years ago. Eight years ago was my first time on an airplane. I was sitting by the window seat and my curiosity compelled as I stare at the window. As the plane lifted off, I felt my body shake. As the elevation rose, my hearing swayed. As the height increased, my anxiety increased. I was frightened to fall. But despite my fear, even though I was afraid, I kept on gazing out those window. And man, it was so pretty. Little did I know that within the beauty always lies the complexity that sometimes cannot easily be comprehended. Then I arrived at the United States friendless, desolate. I was looking forward to meeting new people, but unfortunately, I was muted. Not because I couldn't speak, but because I was afraid to speak. 
not knowing any English. I remember clearly trying to stay in the restroom as long as I could, simply to avoid meaningless conversation. I just can't understand. Simply to look at myself in the mirror, cry and question where I belong. Simply because deep down, I believe that people wouldn't understand me. They wouldn't like me for who I truly am. And I can't remember clearly. Having an anxiety about being rejected because all I ever wanted was to be loved and accepted. I remember clearly looking at all those cool kids wishing that one day I could be just like them. And they must be happy, I thought. And now I can remember feeling like a puzzle piece that just didn't seem to fit. But knowing that a jigsaw puzzle can never be completed without all of its pieces. See, I remember thinking, life is not like what I saw on an airplane at all. The world is not as pretty as it seems when you're about the ground. But that's where I was wrong. See, the complexity of the ground is what makes the beauty. Without those complexities, there is no beauty. People look at me and they ask, how can Ginny be happy all the time? How can she smile even though the rain, it's like the rainy day? But little did they know that they see my smile, but they don't see my pain. But I smile because that, was make, that is what makes them happy. And making them happy makes life easier to bear, both for theirs and for mine. Because life is hard. I wanna say for that, I want to say thank you, Everett High, because you made it safe for me to put myself out there. And because of your love and appreciation, your love and appreciation allowed that girl in the restroom to finally find where she belonged in this whole jigsaw puzzle piece, the purpose of her piece. There will be times where we will strive for our goals and stumble upon our failure. There will be times, many times, where life makes us struggle to the point where we forget who we are meant to be. There will be times, countless, where we doubt ourselves and question if we're good enough. But we must not forget that everything happens for its reason. You never know when moments will be cut short like this year. But we must remember that nobody has the privilege to see that beauty from the upper view all the time. Even pilots land and live their life on the ground. But I believe something makes living life on the ground easier. Like having gratitude, compassion, humility, and selflessness. Those soon you, soon you realize that those are the true qualities of being happy. And I urge you to find those in you if you haven't yet. Now let us live our life to make life easier for others. Let us use our smile to ease others' pain. Let us use our ears to listen for the cries of injustice. Let us use our brains to think, to reflect. How many strange fruit were hung unreasonably on that poplar tree? How many wrongs stood uncorrected? And let us use our voices. Use our voices to advocate for the better change. I am grateful to be surrounded by a community that unites and embrace all the difference for the better cause. Thank you for everything ever at high school. I always smile because of you. And every time I feel down, you stood by me and you convinced me that I matter. So today, I insist that you believe. Believe that you all are matters, but all lives cannot truly be matters if black lives are not matters. Make it a great life. Make it a better row, Everett High School. We can do this. The choice is ours. That is all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. Our EHS Avenue C Jazz Choir, under the direction of Ms. Serena Wiltsey, will now perform Green Lights, arranged by David Von Kampen, with the duet by Kyra O'Hare and Nicholas Spencer.
Thank you to the Avenue C Jazz Choir. And now I would like to introduce our next student speaker, our ASB president, Reese Wells Edwards. Good afternoon, Everett High graduates, staff, families, and guests. My name is Reese Wells Edwards, the outgoing ASB president, and I am so grateful to have been given the honor of addressing you during this important occasion. In starting to write this, I wrestled with the enormous challenge of bringing, bridging the witty, funny speech that I would have given and my need to address the serious racial issues in our country as are being revealed to us, showing how flawed the foundation of our society is. How do we come to grips with balancing the lighthearted concerns of the last remnants of our childhood while being, rightly so, made to confront hard adult issues in a time that is truly unprecedented? How do we pay proper respects to George Floyd and so many other black Americans killed by police and acknowledge our racist systems while still looking ahead with optimism? When we think about our senior year, we think about prom, graduation, and saying our last goodbyes to friends we've known since kindergarten. Our reality was so different from our expectations. I mean, we barely even had a chance to have senioritis. I don't think this is how any of us imagined our senior year going. From World War III threats in January to rampant wildfires in February, and of course, the global pandemic that impacted us in March of 2020. 2020 seems like a year marked by Armageddon. Coronavirus has affected us all, some more than others granted, but it has touched all of us in some way. For some, it's the extra precautions taken for at-risk family members, while for others, it is the loss of someone dear to them. But for nearly all of us, it is the quarantining which took away a drama production, sports season, or ethical AP testing. But one thing we all have in common is our senior spring spent studying from home. On a random Friday in March, we unknowingly left school for the last time, unceremoniously thrust out of our childhood and into adulthood in the blink of an eye and during a global crisis nonetheless. The end of high school is typically the gradual shift from teenager to adult, but for us, instead, a jarring jump. Many of us were stuck looking back at what we were missing instead of looking to the future. And who could blame us? We were missing out on rites of passage that have been ingrained in our culture and in a way that no other previous class have ever experienced. We missed out on the senior run-through of the Everett High Halls, on our chance to sing the alma mater together one last time, and of course our final fugitive night. It would be too easy to complain about the unfairness of our situation. And sure, the situation is extremely unfair. We're barely adults forced to miss out on the quintessential high school experience while also being barred from hanging out with our friends. What good is our rebellious teen spirit when we're trapped inside our houses with our parents or guardians? But things could always be worse. I believe that this shared experience has prepared us better for our next stage of life than any other class. For when is life fair? This unfortunate time has prepared us for the realities of life and has taught us what really matters, as well as giving us perspective that only such extreme events can really teach. For most, our family and friends are there to support us in times of struggle and strife. I, for one, am extremely grateful for my loving family, my strong and handsome friends, and all of the smart and influential teachers that have shaped me into the person I am today. I implore each one of you to think about who in your life has helped you, who believed in you, and who guided you when others would not. Thank them, because no one can make it to where they are by themselves. But in fact, make it by ourselves we must. There is no roadmap for us. No one has gone before us. We have no wise elders to help guide us along a well-worn path. Never before has the world seen a time like this. Then again, that's what makes us special. No one before or after us will have the same experience that we have. No one besides us will know what it means to be part of the class of 2020. And from now until forever, we will have membership in an exclusive club. In fact, and I did use Google for this, only 3.7 million of us high school seniors exist in the entire United States. And while now we may lament our unfortunate circumstances, I know in the future we will be grateful for the humility and perseverance we have had to summon. Instead of focusing on what we didn't have or what we didn't get to do, maybe we should choose to focus on what we can do. What if we looked at this not as misfortune, but as an opportunity to learn and grow? When we surround ourselves with people who support and care for us, we can surely make a difference. When writing this speech, I came across a poem written by Leslie Dwight. It is my personal opinion that this poem kinda sucks and is full of the fluffy and emotional tone that belongs more on my mom's Instagram feed than my own. However, I feel like once you dig through the flowery inflection of the poem, the message rings true. 
Dwight asks, what if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is a year so uncomfortable that it finally forces us to grow? A year we finally accept the need for change. This message applies to us. Of course, we have the option to view 2020 as a failure of a year. We could write it off as the worst year to ever happen, or we could grow. We could recognize that the hardships brought upon us by this year are hardships we can overcome. We will grow from this, and we will be all the better for it. Everett High, Class of 2020, I invite you to join me in using this experience to better ourselves. Let's go forth and change the world. Thank you, Reese. We are at that part of the ceremony that I believe you've all been waiting for. Dr. Saltzman, members of the board, and honored guests, it is my privilege as the principal of Everett High School to present to you the members of the class of 2020 who I certify have met the graduation requirements established by the Everett Public Schools in the state of Washington. Principal Bala, on behalf of the Everett Public School Board of Directors and Administration and the state of Washington, it is my honor to accept the graduating class of 2020. Talon Conyers. Tabitha Brown. Evan Brouse. Cameron Davis. Michael Cracciolo. Valedictorian Ethan Arendt. Well done, Ethan. Congrats. Julia Blair. Sajad Atabi. Ruben Bernhardt. Tyson Barton. Roar Albright. Cooper Brady. Kylie Austin. Valedictorian, Kyla Lay. Michaela Boslow. Alana Collins. Good job, Alana. Kareem Abuhale. Ashley Barquist. (laughs) 
Jacob Anderson. Cherie Bernishon. Sophie Averill. Alondra Avales. Jada Berline. <laughs> Sierra Anderson. Valedictorian Reese Wells Edwards. Daniela Alaza. Michael Amari Allridge. Valedictorian Lucy Lee. Ariel Combs. Shafia Alkutsi. Brandon Campbell. Jeffrey Davis. Michelle Braun. Corin Carlisle. Becca Daniels. And Julie Dahal. Brayton Cook. Leslie Seha Lopez. Christine Rose Callahan. <laughs> Elizabeth Kane. Braden Cook. Jose USB Corral. Slater Fernandez. McKinsey Davenport. Madeline. 
Christ. Zachary Conant. Sydney Davis. Naftali Coyavil Cervantes. Was that right? Because we'll redo it. Marianne Chadwick. Sierra Carrero. Anna Erickson. Austin Emery. Mario Cardona. Daniel Prince Jamani Cacho. Kayla Duncan. Hope Fleischman. Rylan Eshrick. Keone Deakin. Elena Snow. Andrew Dean Evans. Zahava Flores Viatoro. Gerald Denham. Bakuru Emmanuel. Batoy Emmanuel. Christian June de Guzman. Ben Fisher. Zoe Vienne Michelle Barlow Terranova. Colby. Fitz Tomb (laughs) 
Monica Garcia. Rebecca Durr. Madike Fall. Jaden Ferrier. <laughs> Fatima Gonzalez Hernandez. <laughs> Daniel Diaz Lopez. Kevin Young. Austin Duffy. <laughs> Hannah Garung. Maya Espinoza. Carissa Harrington. Greg Ginther. Amber Ford. <laughs> Kelly Gilmore. <laughs> Alexis Garcia. Elise Hall. Gabrielle Elena Gutierrez. Good job, Gabby. Mason Hain. Mateo Hammock. Gage Grauman. Brandon Froland. Lilia Herman. Logan Gibbs. Elisa Gijon Garcia.
Mackenzie Guzman. Jaron George Wilson. Brooklyn Henson. Alexander Hansen. Mem Fox. Jenna Cum Cummerly. Ivan Holguin. Ashley Holden. Maria Gonzalez. Lincoln Jenkins. Gerardo Jimenez. Good job, Gerardo. Joseph Kosnick. Georgia Evans. Tessa Holmes. Madeline Knight. Jessica Conan. Marcus Malone. Reese Jewett Slayton. Sophia Catherine Howard. Anna Kunawave. Tony El Said. Brian Hurtado. Good job, Brian. Jetley Jetton. Jessica Julian. Omar Gorgano. Good job, Omar. 
Shelby McCoy. Rebecca Mayland. Skyler Kennedy Lapointe. Alyssa Matthews. Adrian Munoz. Jada McPherson. Landon McKean. <laughs> Hannah May Lehisniana. Anna Cotille. Kirsten Lewis. Luke Littlejohn. Kevin Marin. Caden Lockhart. Eduardo Mendoza Balderas. Walter Mason. Lydia Lawrence. Moran Gonzalez. Bryce Magbag. Megan Lowe. Fiona Molina. Sarah Ray Landak. Ashlyn Nye.
Skyler O'Donohue. Catherine Leslie. Daryl Milam. Evelyn Neary Nava. <laughs> Esther Aline Luin. <laughs> Nayeli. Lara. Francis O'Mara. Hunter Neely. Jason McKelvey. Montana Miller. Angel Medina. Judah Nanto. <laughs> Nuchia Nyberg. <laughs> Victor Montiel. Natapam Ulamam Jeannie. Cassidy Lee Millar. Genevieve Morales. Maya Morris. Jordan Miles. Kira O'Hare. Dane Miller Wong. Mikey. Murray. Woo! 
Jessica Mitchell. Ong U. Drew Moser. Kelsey Price. Michael Moore. Lazarus Pence. Valid Victorian Liam Rock. Olivia Binion. Jordan Tate. Lilia Roulard. Bailey Peterson. Brandon O. Hannah Post. Aaron Robertson. Sophia Regan. Quinn Pennick. Carlos Rodriguez. Ethan Packer. Juliana Rincon Cruz. Leticia Ramirez. Yvonne Ramirez. Yadani Rodriguez. Katie Peters.
Devaney Robinette. Nida Perez. Hendrix Reynolds. Kendall Tabatabai. Julissa Polito. Mackenzie Swanson. Vanessa Ramos Carrillo. Chris Sharma. Well done, Chris. Congrats. Dylan Sheehan. <laughs> Madison Ruter. Jacob Edward Sutton. Good job. Congratulations, Jacob. Sarah Sutherland. Lily Rummel. Ricardo Reese. Roddy Sosa. Nicholas Spencer. Samuel Robert Smith. Chow Tran. AJ Tryon. Lillian Servan. Yeah. Lilia Servan. Samuel David Chudy. Kevin Torres. Seth T. Hello, hello. And Cecilia Stom.
Celine Sakura Sanchez. Cody Smith. Connor Wicker. Terry Wicker. Elijah Shaw. Lydia Turner. Brooklyn Wilmus. Kaylee Zika. Kelsey Danelle Williamson. Valerie Vasquez. Kara Wheel. Zach Umbo. Olivia Zwar. Come on up, Jonathan. Jonathan Zamora. Hello, hello. Okay. Mackenzie Windsor. Rocky O'Neill Yonker. Dana Zerbst. Anna Wiley. Celedonio Velez Jr. Shyla Virginia. Jaden White. Jaden Vincent. Hello. Yadira Vasquez Cruz. Congratulations, Yadira. Anna Wheeler. Aaron Weber. Colin Wojohn.
Ethan Wold. Fernando Vasquez Ijon. Kimberly Vargas. Shane Edward Warner. Joshua Wallace. Ivanka Putri. We now have the turning of the tassel. I wish to thank all of our parents, family members, friends, and guests for helping us celebrate the extraordinary graduating class of 2020. Please join me and the senior senators for the turning of the tassel. By turning the tassel from the right of the mortarboard to the left, we symbolized going from a student of Everett High School to a graduate. <laughs>